the situation over the last uh, few weeks, few months, has got from, from bad to worse. And it's created enormous um, confusion, anger, bitterness, you name it, inside the ranks of the Labour Party itself. And clearly, uh, this is uh, due to the deliberate uh, intentions of uh, those in the leadership of the party who are, who are pursuing, in effect, a war. I mean, you can't describe it in any other way. It's a civil war inside the Labour Party. We have to tell it as it is. We can't prettify it. This is what's happening. Uh, and it's, it's a war against the, um, the rank and file of the party, really. Um, because those in the, the leadership, and it is a, a right-wing cabal, in my opinion, who had this agenda for a long period of time, because they represent uh, a different class from us. We represent, I think, working people, because they represent the system and the continuation of the system. And uh, I think this uh, demand and this initiative of a recall conference is uh, uh, a very important one, because it um, allows us to galvanize the left, I think, first of all, first and foremost, and also to um, mobilize the rank and file of the party in a positive way in order to combat these attacks and get on the right foot, as it were. And um, I think we have a, a great opportunity. Of course, there are those uh, are perhaps in the party who are perhaps who think, well, you know, this thing, it'll, it'll blow over, you know, that uh, give it time and uh, whatever you do, don't rock the boat. Then we will be there, come and be back and uh, everything will come back to normal. Well, I don't think so. I don't believe so one iota because I believe that the right wing are determined to uh, carry this uh, war through to the end. And the reason why they are so bitter and so determined, I think, is because of the last five years as well. That they, they had a bad experience in the Corbyn. They lost control. And after all, these people, uh, particularly in the Parliamentary Labour Party, uh, thought they ruled the roost, you know, that uh, they had a job for life and that uh, their interests were protected well and truly. And when Corbyn won the election for leader and hundreds of thousands of people joined the party to become a real party, that was a threat as far as they were concerned, a threat to their interests. Uh, and uh, therefore today they're determined, now they're back in the saddle. Unfortunately, they're determined to, uh, yes, to, to carry through a counter-revolution, you know, uh, against the rank and file. And that's been made plain, I think, uh, over, over the past uh, couple of years. I mean, I remember Tony Blair, it was it two years ago, said, well, to bring the Labour Party back to what it really was, what it should be, we need to get rid of 300,000 members. In other words, you had to pur purge the party, and that's what uh, they're trying to do. First of all, by trying to demoralise the Labour Party, demoralise the ranks, and, well, let's be clear, they, they've succeeded in a certain way. You know, 100,000 people, I understand, have left the party through disillusionment and despondency. And, uh, you know, if we're allowed to continue, they'll wreck the whole show, basically. And uh, therefore, it's a, yes, I, I believe it's a, a fight and a half. And people need to understand what it's, it's, it's a fight. This is not a, a tea party. You know, this is a fight to the finish for, for the left as well. Because uh, they will continue all the way through, in my opinion. And as we know, you know, in all great fights, you know, weakness invites aggression, doesn't it? And uh, the weak, uh, weakness that we are perceived of, the, the greater strength that they, they gain from that. And uh, I think we have to learn some, some lessons as well. You know, I don't think we are above not, not learning a few tricks from the last five years because this war hasn't been going on for uh, five minutes or a few months. It's been going on for five years. As soon as Jeremy was elected leader of the party, they come out of the, uh, the trap straight away to undermine him, undermine the membership, undermine the, the election prospects, everything in the book. Obviously backed by the capitalist media, the capitalist class, the establishment, all behind these people because that's what they represent. They, they, they want the, the, the Labour Party back in safe hands, safe hands for capitalism. And the Labour Party is a very important weapon from that point of view as far as they're concerned. And they certainly don't want the rank and file to get, a, get their, their mitts on it. So therefore, the, 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 the right wing were conducting this guerrilla warfare. And what else could you say? It's, I mean, I couldn't, I mean, I know that perhaps I may get carried away with a few words here and there. Perhaps it's the Welshness in me, I don't know. But it's like a fifth column operating in the Labour Party. 
you know, they were destroying everything they possibly could, including electoral uh, responses. You saw that even in 2017, where my old friend was at Stephen Kinnock, when he was interviewed, and you could see when he was told that Labour was at ahead and, and gaining, he, he was a face of despondency. Why? Because they wanted it to lose the election in order to discredit Corbyn and drag him down. That's what happened in 2019, unfortunately. And uh, the rank and file have never had a say on it. And it's about time the rank and file did. I think, uh, you know, there's a, a meme going around about Corbyn saying the real strength of the party is the rank and file. I couldn't agree with him more. But we've got to give, you know, power to the rank and file. And that means a conference and we'll have a conference as far as I'm concerned, because that's the only way we can, you know, call these people to order and democracy must be in the rank and file. It's, I mean, we have lost a trick or two. I mean, I'm in despair sometimes. I think, wow, you know, when the right wing gets, gets in, they're pretty determined. You know, can't fault one at. Uh, well, the left had a chance, had a great opportunity, you know, for five years. And well, you know, the, the, the right wing was spitting in our faces and we were kind of wiping it off. And they were stabbing us in the back and we were, because we wanted all oh, unity, unity. Well, I, I'm in favor of unity. But I'm not in favour of unity if people are stabbing me in the back. I want genuine unity of, of socialists prepared to change society and fight for the interests of working people, not careerists, not Tory infiltrators in the party, because that's what these people are, and that's what they represent. And therefore, we have to put power in the hands of the rank and file. It's a shame, by the way, isn't it? In 2019, 2018, rather, at the Labour Party conference, we've given the opportunity to have open selection. In other words, we can have control over our representatives. What a democratic right that was. And yet we were robbed of it, robbed of it. 90% of constituency parties were in favor of that, that, that initiative, which would, have been, which would have been a game changer. I would have brought real democracy into the ranks itself, but we were denied it. And that was a fateful, fateful move really, because then it allowed them to get on there. You know, they, they felt secure. Of course, a few of them split away, but we knew what the agenda was. And they were there as a Trojan horse within the Labour Party waiting. And we saw what happened, you know, 2019. Oh, everything came showered down, you know. All the living dead were brought out on the television. The Lord so-and-so, Lord Straw, and, and all of them, Mandelson and the rest of them, shouting about how bad the election result was, the worst results in 1935. In fact, we gained more votes than in 2015, more votes than 2010, and more votes than 2005. But of course, they didn't care about that. They had one agenda, and that was to destroy Corbyn. And now what they've done, they got rid of him, you know, out of the party. He's not a Labour MP. And now they're going for those who support him. And those parties were form of danger, like in Liverpool, for instance. And that's where they attacked him, or Bristol, or in Sheffield, or elsewhere. So therefore, it's a real fight and a half. And we must be up for it. We can't just pussyfoot around now. And therefore, I hope that the left will, will galvanise itself. Will take note from what's happening because there's no let up. It's like a you know a blitzkrieg against the, the the left in the party. And if you don't fight for back now, then we'll really be in trouble. So this opportunity for the the conference is spot on, spot on. We have to and look. Oh, some people say, well, are we going to get it? look full force at the point of attack? That's the military angle. In other words, you go for you see something and you go for it, hell for leather. And that's what requires this conference itself, mobilizing constituencies, mobilizing unions, galvanizing support for it, and focus it on getting that. If it doesn't give up, well, we'll use the energy, because we're not giving up. We're not giving up on this struggle. We'll use the energy and the strength we mobilize to carry on the struggle itself, because it is a living struggle, and we can win. We have the power. We have the majority, in effect. They have the machine. And therefore, we're going to take it. You know, it's like, you know, Shelley said, you know, arise like lions, lionesses, I should say, you know, in, in vanquishable numbers, rise up. You've got the power, let us take it, because democracy lies to the rank and file to decide the character, not this pro-capitalist austerity nonsense, but fighting for ordinary working people and the fighting for the ideas of socialism. Thank you.